that you welcome us, that you call us to come, come to you, all who are weary, all who are burdened, and I will give you rest. So Lord, we just come now, open our hearts and ears before you. Speak, Lord God, we pray. We'll just take a moment now to hear from your word. Thank you that you see us and you know us and you welcome us. That we all have a place in your church, the body of Christ, as we be your hands and feet, as we care and love and sacrifice, as we lay down, as we pick up. Lord, I thank you that you hear our prayer. Be our hope, be our comfort, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, good morning and welcome from me. Lovely to see you all. I'll have to get out more chairs shortly. <laughs> We're in a current uh, short little series that we, well, I'm calling We Are. And this morning we're looking at We Are Invaluable. We are invaluable to God's work. If you didn't know it, you are special to Him. God cares about each one of us. He knows you, He loves you, He sees you. God cares about you. A number of you know that we have four children. Now if we lost one of these children, say we get home from church and we go, where's Isabel? Oh, she's gone, she's lost. We wouldn't say, oh well, we have three other children, we'll be right. <laughs> no, we'd never do that at all. For our children are dearly loved by Nola and I, and our children are dearly loved by God himself, for they are uniquely valuable to him and to us as we are. He cares about the one. God loves you because you are you. He values us because we were created for a purpose. You were created to make a difference in his church and in the community around us. That's a hard message at times for us to hear. Because at times we think, well, I'm not spiritual enough, I'm not talented enough, I'm not gifted enough. And we look at everyone else and think we have nothing to offer. Don't listen to the lie that some of us think. If I weren't here, it wouldn't matter. Wrong, wrong, wrong. What you do does matter. Who you are does matter. What you bring to this congregation matters a lot to me and matters a lot to God. The Apostle Paul was talking to the Corinthians and he says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. The body, the human body, has many parts. But the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. I'm sure that's going to be there in a minute. Look at that, the magic of television. Yes. There you go, if you're wondering where it was. You can see that there. We are the body of Christ. Friends, the church has so many parts. And those parts are people. Just like we have many body parts, but we're all one body. We've got an elbow, we've got an ear, we've got a big toe, we've got a uvea. We've got many interesting, fascinating parts, but together they make up one body. Quiz time. What do we call different groups of animals? What is a group of lions called? Anybody? Pride. Pride of lions. What about a group of donkeys? Now a polite answer. Men. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um. <laughs> it's a drove of donkeys. Crows. I'm sure. Yeah. Murder of crows. Yes, very good, very good. What about leopards? It's called a leap of leopards. 
not really doing much if they're just sitting there in a group, but apparently they're called a leap of leopards. We have a group of fish, they're called a school. An interesting one I was reading was a group of wombats. Here we are children, you can thrill your friends at school this week. A group of wombats is called a wisdom. Isn't that interesting? Not that I've ever seen many wombats together in a group, but maybe when they do get together, it's quite a wise affair. Yes. So who, who knows what happens? We've been in Tassie for a number of years. We, we saw a few wombats there, which was quite good. So there you go. Don't say you don't learn anything in church. When someone follows Jesus, you might call them a Christian, or a disciple, or a believer, or a follower. But when we gather together, we are called the church. Paul might call us the body of Christ. When we gather together with like-minded followers of Jesus, spirit-filled, God-focused, we come and be His church. We take on a new identity and become his hands and feet when we serve in his name, his mouth when we speak out his truth, his heart when we love and care. Every part of the body matters. In 1 Corinthians 12, 14 to 18, down a bit further, yes, the body has many different parts, not just one part. If the foot should say, I am not a part of the body because I am not a hand, that does not make it any less part of the body. And if the ear says, I'm not part of the body because I'm not an eye, would that make it any less a part of the body? If the whole body were an eye, how would you hear? Just picture that visually. Yes. Or if the whole body were an ear, one giant ear, how would you smell anything? But our bodies have many parts. And God has put each part just where He wants it. Every part of the body matters, and every person matters in His church. Your role, your presence, your voice, your opinion, your contribution all matter in the family of God. Down a little bit further, Paul says in verse 22 and 27, in fact, some parts of the body that seem weakest and less important are actually the most necessary. All of you together are Christ's body, and each of you is a part of it. Every part matters. Every person matters. Every role matters. Every one matters. Just because you're up, not up the front on a Sunday doesn't make what you do any less important. Craig Rochelle says this, just because what you do is invisible doesn't mean it's not important. Your part matters to the body of Christ. My part matters to the body of Christ. And here at Living Hope, it matters. Friends, week after week, God hears your prayers. People bring in cans, lawns are mowed, carpets cleaned, donations come in, food is distributed. God sees faithful people playing their part in His church. It's not invisible. God sees. God sees. My friend Kath has recently started a, a prayer quilt square ministry. Have a chat to her about that after the service if you want to. Over these last couple of weeks, we've had mobile mission maintenance people here painting the church, if you hadn't noticed, if you came in the room. Something's a bit different. If you weren't here, you wouldn't have seen it done, and miraculously it's done. The Gideons handing out Bibles, going into hotels, going to prisons, going to schools. A lot of it's unseen. If I, I'm always, if I'm in a hotel or some resort or some nice place, I usually get, oh, found the Gideon Bible. What you do matters. Our right teachers, God bless them. God bless you, Cheryl, and all chaplains, hospitals, schools, the armed forces. What we do matters for God, and at times many of it is unseen.
Much of it is unseen, but we faithfully serve Him. Other people may never know what you do, or how you serve, or what you give. That you turned up early and you went home late. That you emptied a bin or cashed in some cans. But God knows. Lives are transformed. Spiritual blessings flow. The church is incomplete without your contribution. I read this during the week. Don't let the whispers of people distract you from the calling of God. There's so much noise. At times, so many things in our heads, so many opinions, so many fingers pointing our way, so many whispers. Don't get distracted from what God has called you to do. The church is not the building. The church is not an institution. We are the church, an expression of Jesus Christ to the world around us. Alive, breathing and active. That's who we are and what we are. Your past doesn't disqualify you, it prepares you. Oh, but Michael, yes. Oh, but you don't, uh, don't I? Come faithfully and serve. Serve him. Follow him. Play your part. With our AGM approaching, where is God calling you to serve in our church? With a new year just around the corner, what more is he calling for us to do? Care packs for cancer patients, free community dinners, community gardens, crisis housing, teaching English, English running a playgroup, supporting families. I don't know. Let us pray. Let us dream. Let us imagine what God is calling us to do as we jump in to a new year. Stop trying to prove yourself from a place of rejection, but from a place of prayer and purpose and see what God can do. He values you. Just look around you. He values the person beside and in front and behind. You and I matter to God and His church globally and locally here in this place. We need everyone. In case you were wondering. To play their part. So thank you. For we are invaluable. We are invaluable to one another and invaluable to Him as we extend our footprint in this community and beyond. Let me finish with Hebrews chapter 10, verse 20 to uh, 23. A good reminder for us today. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. Not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. But encourage one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching. We need everyone. God needs everyone as we play our part and represent Him well in this place and beyond. God bless you. Amen.